What is good everybody, my name is Tetro here with Band Lab. Today we are gonna work on arranging and mixing a beat. You know in that stage of making music where you're just, you've got a good loop going, but it's like how do we turn that into a song? How do we finish it? That's what we're gonna be doing today. You can watch the previous tutorial to see how we came up with all these musical ideas and recorded them into Band Lab. But for now, let's review what we already have. So at the start, I remember we built a four bar loop of just some drums, just kick and snare. We started this song with song starter, which gave us some instrumentation, which we edited on our own. Eventually we ended up with this first loop. We've got a melodic synth on top, that strummed guitar, a nice bass line. The melody stretches for eight bars while everything else is essentially just a four bar loop. Then we went ahead and built a B section with a new chord progression and a new bass line and the addition of some guitar. We recorded some simple palm muting in the lower register, but then we also recorded a slightly different melody. The drums are sounding a little boring, but we do need to start thinking about how are we going to turn this into an actual song. So let's zoom out a bit on our timeline here. Whatever genre of music that you are personally interested in making, you should go listen to your top five favorite songs and really pay attention to the structure. What is the intro like? What is the first verse like? How is the first verse different than the second verse? And how do we get to the hook from the verse? All these are things that you can study the music that you really like and figure out how to apply it for yourself. So I think for us, starting with drums is not a good idea. So I'm gonna move that drum idea over. In fact, I'd like to select all of the music here and move everything over. This is just gonna give us a big pile of stuff over here down in the timeline that later we can pull in. I'm gonna move it over. I am gonna keep it all aligned to the grid how it should be. And let's think about starting with the strummed chords. Now I'm gonna pull both of these clips over because we have that little weirdness with our chords. Maybe you don't have that with your beat, but I did strummed chords. So the strum comes a little before the downbeat. Because of that, I am going to start my track not on measure one, but I'm gonna start it here on measure three. That's gonna give us time to play into those chords. Good, we should also start with that ambience, that little tape distortion sound. I'm just gonna copy that over and I'm gonna have that start right here. Cool. On my computer, I've actually got all of my samples and I have some field recordings, like some birds chirping, I think I'm gonna drop that in and use that here in BandLab. So if you have samples on your computer, it's really easy just to drag and drop them into BandLab. You can use your own sounds. So here we go. Just gonna fade that in a bit. Let's do a little bit, yeah, just like that. Doesn't need to be so loud. Now, we're gonna be thinking in four bar sections. So every four bars, I'm gonna introduce some change. So there, right when that loop finishes, is where we want something to change. And I'm thinking, let's go ahead and drop in the full drums with hi-hats, kick and snare, and more. Now I'm gonna copy those drums over. I'm gonna do one loop starting on bar seven. That's where our drums are gonna come in for the first time after hearing our guitar. Probably gonna repeat these drums at least once, so let's loop them for another four bars. We can do our little trick with this guitar where we shrink it down to an even four bars and then bring the beginning back over like that. So we're gonna repeat it again. Let's have the bass come in there, because again, I'm thinking every four bars, I want something new. So let's bring in the bass and let's see what that sounds like, if that's enough change for that moment. that sounds pretty good but let's do a little bit more maybe we stop the drums a little early in that moment then we're gonna build a 
new section here, another eight bars. Three, four, boom. So here I think is where we're gonna introduce our melody. You see that every four and eight bars, we're thinking about how is this section different? And not only is how is each section different, how are we adding new things, but how can we change little transition points? Like dropping out the drums in that moment is a simple enough way to transition into a new section. Now let's grab our, our vibes. And, and here it is, at bar 15. Let's bring that up in the mix. Now I'm gonna start to think about the levels. How should everything sound here? We're slightly panned to the left, that's fine. This can be even louder. So now we've listened to this chord progression quite a few times. I think we're ready to go to our B section or a new chord progression, which I have over here in our pile down on the timeline. This is our new chord progression based around a minor key. Let's start that at bar 23. Let's hear how this transitions. And you know what? I think since we've only heard this melody one time, repeating it here would not be such a bad idea. Let's check if it works over this new chord progression. I think it does. And we did stop our tape ambience here. That's fine, that's a good change to have. But what if we brought the birds back in for this B section? I'm always just holding options or alt and copying over clips that I want to copy instead of just drag them over. I don't wanna loop this, I actually wanna extend it just like that. Here we get some birds chirping, some new chords. Remembering our every four bars rule. It's a rule you can break, but it's not necessarily a bad rule. Let's consider bringing the bass line in after four bars here. But everything's a little too slow. So even though we've created some variations of our drums, like I've got a kick snare version of the drums here, I think I might want, you know, just hi-hats. Let's try to do that. So I'm gonna not make this be a big repeated section and I'm just gonna copy this clip over and instead of having it be all these drums, I'm gonna get rid of the kick and snare completely. Or maybe just the snare. That has a more build up sound. But now in this stage, you know, even though we're done writing the main musical ideas, it doesn't mean we can't add new musical ideas. So why don't we add a track? And I would like to add an audio track. And I'd like to get something from BandLab Sounds. Let's search Shaker. And I'm gonna search Loops specifically. And I'm gonna find something that's relatively close to our original BPM, which is 75. It will do time stretching for us, but if we can find something that is close, and not so far, it will have an easier time stretching it. So let's search under the percussion. Let's search genre. Since we're making lo-fi, I can find a lo-fi shaker, hopefully. Let's go back to our results. That might work. Ooh, that one kind of sounds nice. Let's try this one. I'm gonna drag that in here and hear how it sounds in the mix. But I'm gonna drag it onto its own track. I almost forgot. Dragged it onto the wrong track. Oh, that blends perfectly actually, wow. Doesn't need to be as loud. So let's bring it down. And maybe we add a hint of reverb on top. Now I can't forget, okay, we're done with band lab sounds. That was a nice addition, that shaker. I can't forget that we also have some guitar to add here.
let's stretch out our ambience for another four bars. Let's keep the shaker going for another four bars. We're gonna lose this melody, I think. We're gonna keep our chord progression going. Maybe we drop the bass and keep the guitar. Let's hear this section. One thing I'd like to do with the guitar actually is we're gonna make it sound nice and wide. So I'm gonna duplicate this track and one of these instances, I'm gonna pan hard right and the other one, I'm gonna pan hard left. Let's listen to that. We're not gonna hear a ton of change off the bat here. It's gonna be a little bit different, but now what I'd like to do is turn off snapping of the grid and we're gonna zoom in really close here. We're gonna turn off snapping because what I'm gonna do in reality here is just move one of these off by milliseconds, a tiny bit. That's gonna create a really nice wide sound. I think that sounds really good. Now that we've got two of them, we can probably bring them down in the mix a bit more. If you notice, I usually tend to bring things down quite low because we're leaving headroom. Later on, we might want to master this track, so it doesn't need to be super loud yet at this stage. Okay, so here we go. We have a section where the drums are going to stop. I'm gonna turn my magnet snapping back on. And I think we're gonna need a big section change here at bar 35. And actually what I'd like to do is have a break in the music here. So I'm gonna shorten everything up. We're gonna leave just the birds chirping in that moment for about four beats, just one bar. Just gonna listen to the birds chirping. And that's gonna help us transition back to our A section. That's ultimately what we've been building up towards. We're gonna have the drums come in not on bar 35, but on bar 36. We're gonna bring our ambience back in there. We can jump right in with the melody here or save the melody for later, I'm not sure yet. Let's basically grab the chords and the bass line, this exact section from earlier. I'm just gonna copy both of those and drop them in somewhere around here. Make sure we're all, all lined up to the grid. I think that's good. Let's hear that. Yes, I've got everything lined up there, fantastic. But now we're gonna add a little more energy because we're gonna bring this shaker over. So we've never heard this section with shaker yet. So here at the end, we have something new. And I'm willing to bet that our palm muted guitar here is going to fit as well over this section, not just that original section. So I just hold shift and copy both of them over. Great, I think there's a little bit more we can do to add energy. I realize there's a whole guitar part we didn't even use. Let me go ahead and duplicate the guitar track again. And this guitar, we are not going to do any panning or anything with, so we are just gonna keep it as a solo guitar. Let me delete those extra clips. Bring this over here. Let's hear how this sounds over this section. It might not work. Oh, it does work. Let's dig into the effects a little bit because I want this to be a bit bigger and that might mean adding some ping pong delay like we did earlier uh, with the original lead synth. Go ahead and add that ping pong delay but bring it before the reverb. A little too much on the feedback side. I'm gonna bring the mix down as well so it doesn't blend over the actual idea.
that doesn't sound half bad. And you know what? I'd like to add one more audio track here. So now I'm just going to try to find like a symbol, like a crash symbol would be good. Nothing too crazy like that. Let me go ahead and search symbol and genre. Let's see what we can get in the lo-fi genre. I think we can make this symbol work if it's not so loud. And if we go into the effects, I'll use graphic EQ. We're gonna bring everything down in that low end. Great, and one more thing, we're gonna put reverb on top. Let's just use studio reverb. That's gonna help soften that sound and push it a little further away. There we go, a little mixing there, bring it down in level. We've arrived at our new section. Little elements like these are gonna help those transitional moments be a little more dramatic, because without this crash, we arrive at this moment and it's not so big. We wanna just add a little more emphasis to this entrance. Now I'm gonna see if we can get away with dropping in our original melody here at bar 40. our drums end here. And we extend some of this music to have a little bit of an outro. Now we're building up the end of our song. We're at nearly two minutes, which I think is, you know, for a lo-fi beat, we want to be hitting around the two minute mark. We're just over. Of course, it could be longer, could be shorter. Let's see if we can actually Play these shakers for a bit more and then use a little volume automation here. Draw in a couple nodes and we'll do a volume fade here. Great, shakers have faded out. And I think that's a totally fine ending there. Well, we can end with a bit of noise. That's fine too. We can have that fade out. I do think we need to bring the birds back. Bring the birds back. Drag this clip over to our outro. We can have it start a little before. Good. And we're gonna wanna end that right here. Let's slice, delete the extra. Just go back into this automation really quick. We're gonna automate the volume for everything. I'm double clicking to add a node, double clicking to add another node at the end, and fade it way down. We're gonna do the same thing for the guitar. The guitar doesn't have to fade out right away, but maybe by the second half, it should start fading just like that. It's less like things starting and stopping so abruptly. It can be easy in loop-based music to have your loops start, and stop and start and stop. But if we do a little fading and we do little changes here and there, it can make it a little more dynamic. I think the other elements are fine. We could fade the bass line as well. We won't fade it all the way. We'll just fade it gradually there. And we'll let that melody instrument play out. Let's get out of automation mode. So here's our outro. Everything's gonna fade out. And that is how we arrange a track in BandLab from starting from just these basic looped ideas to now pretty much a finished track. So let's zoom out and examine. Don't forget we have these ideas at the end that are just scraps from before, but we took this very simple two section idea and made a pretty decent track. Remembering that we have some dead air at the beginning. Got our intro featuring just the chords, slowly building up piece by piece. You see that every four bars, a new idea comes in. And so we've got all of the ideas happening. The chords, the bass, the melody. Do that for a bit. And then by the time we've built up to all of our musical ideas, well, how do we keep things interesting? We go to a B section where we kind of do the same thing again. We do another build up here. 
starting very sparsely. This almost looks identical to our intro, right? Introduction of a brand new instrument. Delete this extra track that we have. And then we kind of build up and then build back down, right? And eventually everything builds up and culminates in this final chorus where a lot of the musical ideas come together for the first time. This arrangement process that we just went through is really about taking your listener on a journey and making the track interesting, giving them a reason to continue to listen. So if new things start to enter every now and then, if every four bars something new is coming, or a section changes, or we're presented with a new musical idea, that gives us a reason to wonder what's next. Oh, where do we go from this section that starts on a minor chord? And it is very satisfying for the listener to hear something they've heard before, like in the A section, but now with new elements, right? Now, we've been doing a bit of mixing on the fly here. I've just been keeping an eye on all the levels as we've been going, but one thing you want to keep in mind is what do you want the listener to listen to and what is the most important thing for the listener to be hearing? Usually the melody is something you really want them to pay attention to. I think this guitar here is the main melody. I think it's at a pretty good level. But I know that this new, this old melody actually is going to enter in at bar 40. So, if this melody is slightly panned left, and we're doing ping pong delay, so it's going all over the stereo field anyway. But if that's panned slightly to the left, and these things are going to happen at the same time, we should pan this guitar slightly to the right. Just to keep them out of each other's way slightly. They're playing different enough musical ideas that I don't think they'll interfere too much, but... I think that's pretty good. Let me see the drum effects. We are filtering out quite a bit of the top end. Let's see if we can make that a little brighter. I think that vintage limiter sounds really good on there. That shaker might be a little loud. Instruments that have a brighter tone that are in like a higher frequency range will stick out of your mix more than the lower frequency range stuff. So just be aware of that. We can naturally hear this shaker because it sits on top of the mix very naturally. Anyway, just by nature of what kind of instrument it is. So it doesn't need to be very loud at all. And some of these fades doing different transitional things like fading things out between sections or having a crash on a new section for instance is really going to help to add drama a little break from the music before we return to a familiar idea there's lots of little tricks like these that you can use in your arrangement to keep the listener listening throughout your song right that's what we ultimately want we want them to keep hearing our musical ideas and keep listening throughout our song and bring them on a journey. So using a lot of these techniques we talked about today, you can do that. But from here, you've taken simple loops and turned it into now a full track with a real structure. It's one of the biggest things I see for first time music makers that they struggle with is like, how do I take these loops and make an actual song out of it? What is song structure? Well, here's a simple way to approach that. So remember, you can go ahead and study your favorite songs and study their structure and apply that to your own music. And you can use some of the simple tips that we learned today, building up different sections, taking things in, taking things out, changing something every four bars to keep your tracks dynamic, build them up over time, and then go ahead and hit that publish button, share it with the world so everybody can hear your music. Of course, don't forget to save your project while you're here too. Okay, that is gonna be it for now. Hopefully you have a great understanding of how to arrange your tracks in BandLab. If you enjoyed this tutorial, if you found it helpful, please let us know down in the comments. Leave a like on your way out. For now, my name is Tejo here with BandLab, and that's gonna be it. Have a good one.